Third-year defensive tackle Justin Matabike is off to a blazing start for the Baltimore Ravens defense. I know the Ravens are only 3-3, three and three and there's a lot of things said about their defense, but one thing you cannot say is that it's fun to line up and play and try to block Justin Matabike. Who knows what you know? opposing teams' offense, offensive linemen say in their meeting rooms before the game versus what they say after the game. Justin Matabike reminds me of one of those guys that you look at before the game and you think his impact is capped. There's a ceiling on his impact. And then after two possessions, coaches turn to each other or face-to-face or on the headset and say, we can't block 92. You can see those things on the first two possessions. Now, are there times where he's dominant in the first three, four possessions, and then the impact seems to fade away later on in the game? A little bit. I offer to you that that does not mean he's not playing as well. There are certain concepts that if you run at Justin Matabike or away from him, away from him, he's going to take that away from you. And I'm going to show you some film from 2022. And then I'm going to reflect back on some film from 2021, something I've I visited twice in videos on zone schemes. He was elite last year. Part of this is not a surprise. What is a surprise a little bit is pass rush, situ- pass rush situations where he gets kind of locked up. He's no longer frozen. Last year, it was like if the bull rush didn't work, he was kind of frozen there. Now he's got this little like quick rip usually with his left hand once he's locked up on someone it typically is to his right with his inside hand left hand i haven't really seen too many where he's he's doing the same move you know a mirrored version of it to his left dipping with his rip dipping and ripping with his inside right arm let's get to the film we're going to start with 2022 film we're going to start with the most recent game against the giants forgive me if my player um skips i watched one of the videos earlier today and i was not pleased with my video player. So if it is low quality, I want you to tell me. I have to go get a different one. Here's Matabike early in the game, I think, against the Giants. He gets a sack on this, but this isn't really my point on this play, to be real with you guys. One of the things you can't do, you cannot scoop Justin Matabike. So scoop is like a run concept going this way, all right? A zone concept with these linemen. You know, maybe the running back going here. Maybe bouncing it, maybe banging it, maybe trying to bend it back. I offer to you that something that's going to happen with Justin Matabike, every time you run a zone concept away from him, is you will never scoop him. You will never scoop him with the backside guy that's lined up outside of him, which shouldn't happen, for real, if you're reading your block. If you're reading your inside block, and that guy's going here, that's your key. You should be moving in this direction. People get scooped, though. Good players get scooped. Not just a BK. He doesn't get scooped. He's always going to be able to split between those two guys. It's not really splitting a double team. In this case, it ends up being a sack because it's a, a play-action concept. I'm going to refer back to that, the fact that you can't scoop just a BK. I'm going to refer back to that when I show you some 2021 film. Against the Giants, again this past week, quarterback in the shotgun, they motion out. Now we've got a trigger that it could be you know, should be passed, but it's not. It's QB draw. Matabike is athletic enough. He's more athletic than the guards he's facing. I don't know if he's lost weight intentionally, but he looks quicker. But he's retained that strength and that explosiveness, that ability to redirect post-snap. Redirect more than once. Sometimes it's twice. He has a tremendous advantage over these linemen, even though, you know, you can see, look at the size of him compared to the guard. There is a difference there. I think he's 290, I believe. Maybe a little bit lighter than that. Incredible strength. Do you see what he does to this guy? You know, I always say frames him up. Like, he has has stood up this offensive guard. And he has such power in his hips. You can see, and I'm sure his right foot and his toes are dug into the ground. That... He's got an excellent foundation to be able to shed this guy and then make the tackle. Hopefully when I restart the play like that, you're not getting this like weird line across the screen like a tearing effect. I thought I noticed that in a video earlier today. It kind of pissed me off. Tackled Saquon Barkley, I think, four times the other day. Oh, I think that says a lot. He's peeking here at the tackle. He's in this, like, some people call this a, a four-eye. Some people call it a wide three. I'm not sure he's playing a, a four-eye technique, uh, but the, he's certainly getting a down block by the tackle. 
So a down block by the tackle means he's going to seal the inside D tackle, which in this case is Matabike. And then you're getting a pull by the guard and also a pull by the center. <clears throat> this is their patented down play that they ran to death against the Titans. Watch what Matabike does here. He's down blocked, but he's, he's forced this lineman in the backfield. So they've collisioned. Okay, that tackle trying to down block him in the center have collision. They've run into each other. So he's impeded the blocking scheme already. Then he spins out of the down block, and he makes the tackle, along with a guy who I think we've cut now. Guys, I don't know how well he's playing. I don't know what the level is. Like, you know, is it a is it starter? Is it all pro? Is it pro bowl or whatever the heck that's going to be this year? It's freaking nasty. Justin Matabike is a star for our defense. Travis Jones playing well. Calais, Calais Campbell's playing well. Those, Justin Matabike is a star for this defense. The snaps have to go up. 2021, guys, this is not new stuff against a run. This is the tackle that Patrick Queen had against the Vikings at home. Look at what Matabike is doing to the guard. Look at the lane he's creating for Queen. Now, we've got them out leveraged. We've got a force, strong safety. We've got outside backer. We're in our base look. But look at what Matabike is doing. This is last year. This is not this year's film. He's literally taking an offensive guard for an NFL team and driving him four or five yards in the backfield. You get the end zone angle of it. doesn't really give you the, the perspective, if you ask me, of how impressive it is. He played a great game against the Vikings. He played exceptional against the Packers last year. He played really well against the Steelers up there in Pittsburgh last year. Those are all games where I think I did a film study of, the, of him after the game. All right, we're trying to get to the second play. This is a short little pass play. I think it's a run play out of uh, 22 personnel. There's Matabike, the D tackle on our right. The offense is left. Look at the surge he's getting on that guard. This is a different guard, okay? He's on the other side now. You're supposed to get this little like split zone type look from the fullback number 30. So the line is trying to work this way. 30 is supposed to be coming back across to create this extra angle. Nope. Matabike has driven this guy in the backfield. If you haven't if you haven't been able to tell yet, this is going to be a long video. I'm a huge Justin Matabike fan. Huge dating back to last year and even the year before some. End zone angle same play. I know the pace maybe needs to pick up, so you know my apologies. I think the guy's play is due this lengthy examination, analysis, um, praise, in my opinion. I love how he how violent he is with his hands. You know, maybe his pad level is a little higher here than than you would think, but than you would want. But he's able to impede blocking schemes, guys, that are at him or away from him. That's rare. Yeah, yeah, NFL D linemen are the best in the world. Don't get me wrong. There's no other league, right, where you have guys that are better. I get it. But Justin Matabike is a guy who, if you try to run away from him and you try to scoop him on the backside, maybe my line's there on drawing great. I'll draw it up from the end zone angle again. He's going to split that. You can't scoop him. You can't get scooped really anyway. And then if you run it to him, he's going to beat the guard to the outside and force the ball to cut back. He's always going to force the ball to cut back, is my point, whether it's to him or away from him. And I'm going to try to convince you of that in this video. It's away from him. It's got to cut back. If you're That is huge for an inside linebacker. You know where to fit because of the talent level, explosiveness, and commitment to his angle of the guy that's in front of you. Hopefully that makes sense if you've played inside linebacker or, or even D lineman. I think it makes sense to you. It may not make sense to you if your you know, connection to the game doesn't involve those type of positions. People know where Matabike is going to be on this zone stuff away. All right? Yeah, you've got, the, you've got um, Watt coming through on like the split zone, kind of similar to the last play. But Queen and Bynes, look at them. They're already both getting ready to fit off the backside of Matabike. Yeah, it's because the running back cuts back. The running back cuts back because of Justin Matabike. That's the point. And this is not an isolated thing, guys. Man, I'm a huge fan. I'm sure you can tell. It's like uh, 
almost 11 p.m. Eastern time Tuesday night, and I'm recording film about uh, Justin Matabike just because I think he's a warrior. I think he's a special talent. If you ask me, at the end of this year, we should sign the guy. You know, that's just based on what I see, unless there's, you know, some kind of issue I'm not aware of. So let's get back to the uh, breakdown a little bit. Here's Matabike. I said to you, you can't run away from him. You can't run at him. The run plays at him. Watch what he does with the guard. He's going to force you to declare, meaning he's won on the front side. All right. In the old days, we used to talk about, you know, your helmet's got to get to the outside of his helmet if you're playing in a shit outside shape. So because his helmet started out lined up outside of this guard's helmet, we want to maintain that. That's a, that's a simplistic way of talking about it. It's more to it than that. He gets a little bit of penetration, and he's not getting expanded. Like, he's not getting driven this way. Now, the angle of the blocker is different, but let's compare it to this lineman here, 57, which is the center. Williams is going to beat him to the front side. Excuse me, that's not Williams. Yes, it is. It's William. Williams has is, is got him beat by alignment. It's not the center. It's the guard. My apologies. I thought it was 57. He's got him beat by alignment. 51 is going to take Williams and expand him. You see Williams' feet were like here at one point. He's been expanded, not Matabike. There's an edge. He's not an edge defender, but there is an edge there that you're not expanding horizontally. Simultaneous to that, he's getting vertical push. I don't know. Maybe I'm overstating it. You know, it does end up being a, a longer game for Najee Harris, but if you're an inside linebacker and you're watching the video or somebody who played the position, you know, let me know if you see the same traits, uh, the same high-level play as I do. All right, now finally, from 2021, I think this might be the last one. Maybe there's two more. He's in here in a short yardage situation. Try to track this. Najee Harris runs into a pile. That helmet right there is Justin Matabike. Calais Campbell is, is right next to him. Calais Campbell, you'll see from the end zone angle, actually pushes Matabike down closer to the center. So he just pushed Mads down. Watch the push. He's split two guys. Yeah, Queen's coming in from the side. You know, so it's a great play all the way around. Matabike is a huge part of what we're doing uh, this year, if you ask me. And um, he played better last year than he gets credit for. Here he is against the Vikings. Again, zone away. You're going to get the end zone angle. You get a better view of it. It's a great play by Josh Pines. All right, the zone concept is going this way. Going this way. Here's Matabike. I'll pause it a couple times during the play. You're not scooping him. So you got a combo right now on him. And, and simultaneous to not scooping him, scooping him would be like getting to the side of him. It's not what 74 is trying to do. 74 is just trying to get horizontal push and create a scene. Well, Matabike is able to stay in that gap. And then at the moment, the moment that the center releases up, watch, what, watch where Matabike goes. Right now it's being comboed. All right, so it's two on one. As soon as the center 52 works up, Matabike is able to start gaining ground. Now he doesn't, you know, he doesn't end up two yards in the backfield. That's not realistic. That's not the way it works. But he's not getting horizontally pushed and pushed backwards after the combo block. Post combo, he's got great technique. He's actually been called for holds twice in the last two years on this technique because they call him, they call him for holding uh, the backside guy that's trying to scoop him or get some horizontal push on him. You know, I just think his his run defense is exquisite to him, away from him. It is not something that must be fun to deal with. Let's do 2022 film because I know we're a long way in. Um, you know, forgive me if the pace was too slow, but I just think so highly of him. I think he's an extremely underrated player uh, for this team. Again, run away from him. Now, I'm not going to give you an end zone angle, and this is one of the things I'm talking about, and this is one of the problems with his defense, if you ask me at times. Matabike is not going to lose on zone away. We don't need to blitz Patrick Queen over the top. Mads has it handled. If I had the end zone angle, it would look a lot better. But this is going to be a cutback here. Why? Matabike can play the front side on this. Where did I show you all the 2021 film? Where did I show you the linebackers fitting? Off the backside. See, the back 
of Matabike. Our fit is back here where the hole is. The hole is there because we blitzed the linebacker. So I'm back mapping here a little bit. We don't need to call that stunt. We don't need to have that auto stunt in because Justin Matabike is going to win to the play side, to the zone side, to the flow side. Hopefully the way I'm saying this is making sense. And I, I fault our coaches for that. I don't fault Patrick Queen. I fault our coaches for that. We don't need to do that. This is his little inside rip that he's kind of perfected. I don't have the end zone angle of this one either. Big swing back. Again, I hope my player is is not you know cutting or, or edging the screen out for you guys. So you're going to see this big swing back and then rip through. And that same lineman that's dealing with him gets called for a hold. I mean, it's an obvious hold. You know, it's it's not the type that they do on Oway, which is slightly less obvious, but still obvious. And he gets a sack. He's got two and a half sacks this year. I think 18 tackles. Last year, I think he had 19 tackles total and two sacks total. He's got two and a half this year. Four quarterback hits, two passes defense, which I'll show you later. Doesn't get a win here. Doesn't get a sack. That's not the point. The point is, this is what we're getting now when he gets locked up with a guard. We're going to get this little rip with his inside hand, his left hand. The previous one I showed you actually was with his right hand, which I mentioned earlier. I didn't remember that one. So there's a, a nice little example of a little dip and rip, just a quick one. And then trying to power through the uh, blocker. A bunch of film from each game. Hopefully I'm giving you guys all the film uh, that, you're, you know, that your heart's content. Run play into the middle of the defense. He's not involved with the tackle. But one thing that I was taught by the coaches that were way smarter than me, I didn't play D-line, but, I mean, when I was learning to be a defensive coordinator, guys way smarter than me taught me, like, it's not about just being in your gap as a defensive lineman. It's about being in your gap and condensing the gap that's inside of you. So Matabike's lined up in a three. That's the B gap. Inside of him is the A gap between the guard and the center. Watch what he does. It's a pull concept. So the guard is pulling. His gap is changed. That's his key. His key is going this way. So he's got to go that way. In my opinion, he condenses the gap because he pushes the center into the play side guard. It ends up being a short gain, don't get me wrong, but it's not anything that Justin Matabike did wrong. Justin Matabike can play his gap and he can condense the inside gap. Even in the NFL, I think that's a rare thing. I think you're going to get two angles of this one. Here's Matabike down here. Short yardage situation. Marcus Peters, Owe, Chuck Clark are in there. Don't get me wrong. They play a role in it. The guy the running back is running into. You don't see his helmet. It's behind number 71. That's Justin Matabike. He's everywhere for us, guys. He's everywhere. I'm probably preaching to the choir. I know that you guys knew he was playing well. I'm trying to explain to you, he's playing better than you even think he is. You don't see his helmet because JPP's in there. Maybe this is his helmet right here. Matt BK's a monster. He cannot be fun to deal with. You know, I don't know if they do surveys or post-game surveys of offensive linemen, but if they did, I think he would be the guy that teams play against on our defense that is the least fun to try to block. Oh, yeah, he's got two passes defense. Yeah, that's the one that we could have caught for Queen. He's got another one here in the Bills game. Where do you think his ceiling is? I'm talking him up. I'm talking him up a lot. He's on the Ravens. He's one of my favorite players. You're not. This is not happening. Like, this is poor by the Bills. He's in the three. Justin Matabike in a three. You have to combo. And like I said earlier, you're not going to scoop him. The backside guy is never going to scoop him. That's not that line's not accurate. Okay, it's, it's, the gaps are moving. A gap, B gap, all the gaps are moving this way. Okay, you're not going to scoop out of BK. It's not going to happen. It's going to take. Now you could pin pull. You know you could pin, and then pull. That might work against Justin Matabike. But I think his recognition of blocks at this time. When I say it might work, I mean that might be your best option. This ain't going to work. It's a hold by 73, by the way. I mean, that's a hold. You, Matabike is running this way. His right shoulder and his helmet ended up going this way. Why? Because he got held. It's a tackle for loss. He's a real problem. Real problem. 
Travis Jones is balling. Calais Campbell, glad we still got him. Michael, I mean, if we had Pierce, you know, we have a dominant interior line. I think Matabike is the best out of all of them. He's unselfish. You know, he's running stunts, trying to free guys. This is a stunt where we're bringing him this way, trying to free this gap for Calais, you know, and maybe loop Oway around. But it looks like Owe recognizes that the ball's going to come out, so he stops his stunt. As it is, Matabike gets a tip pass. Didn't expect for this to be a 20-minute video on Matabike, but it seems to be where we're going. Uh, you know, if you're if you're not a fan of long form content, you're probably not listening to watching at this time. Uh, you know, I don't I like this. Some people who are like, hey, you gotta have some recognition. You can't get screened. Nah, I want him getting off the ball. Now, does that apply to every member of our defense? No. You know, I want Owe Bynes to be involved in this play. I don't want the first play of the game to be yet yet another screen. All right. But I like that he's getting off the ball. I like that he's slight. He's a little bit out of control. He's not 12% out of control. I don't even think he's 10% out of control. I think he's like 6% out of control. He's at 106% effort, if you ask me. And I like that. All right, stunt between him and Calais. This is the first third down of the game, I believe. Calais is occupying the center and the guard, and we're looping Mads around. The guard and center, the guard does a nice job. You can see he picks up Mads, but then Calais just absolutely crushes Joe Burrow. This looks really bad. And that's what I'm saying. I'm glad that Matabike is is unselfish. I'm glad he's trusted now. He's gone from the guy that doesn't get a ton of reps last year, 2021, and even 2020, the year before, less reps, to a guy that's used on these stunts now. They trust him. Giants film again. Actually, you've seen some of this. You know, you've seen some of these plays if you were here the whole time. So, you know, you certainly don't have to stick around the whole time. But I think he's elite. And I hate the word elite. I hate top 10. I hate top 5. I hate all of those designations. There's people who do their job. There's people who do their job incredibly well. And then there's people who are good at everything they're doing. They're a physical handful you know, for the people that are lined up against them. And I feel like that's just a Matabike right now. We're getting a lot out of him in the interior A and B gaps. You know, he's not an edge defender, so we're not going to get 10, 12 sacks out of him. Don't get me wrong. I think it's entirely possible that we get six. I would put him and Travis Jones in the same boat. Opportunities are going to come for sacks. And uh, once they do, I think these guys are going to take advantage of them. Let me know what you think of him in the comment section as this video premieres. One of my favorite videos to do. I hope I get to do one of these every four or five weeks as I compile film of Justin Matabike having the, the best year he's had in his career. Third year player. I think a third round draft pick. I might be wrong there. I believe he's a third round pick. And uh, to me, he looks like a guy who we need to sign a year early. Meaning, if Calais Campbell retires... And maybe, you know, for whatever reason, Matabike ends up playing. I think right now he's playing about 55% of the snaps, maybe 60. If he was to end up playing 75% of the snaps, something like that, I think you could be looking at a guy who, you know, at his best for a full 17-game season, you know, there's an extra game there. I'm going to continue to refer to it as an extra game as long as I do this. He could get eight sacks in a seven. You know, it's possible. Is he an eight-sack guy? No, but he could get eight sacks under the right circumstances. And if you combine that with his ability to stop the run, I don't want to see him get eight sacks next year. Well, for him personally, I want to see him get him get eight sacks. You know, I've got I vacillate on this. Like I root for a guy like Justin Matabike to get paid hella money, but I also recognize that you know we can't be having to spend you know eleven million dollars or something like that on Justin Matabike. I think we should sign him after this year. Let me know if you what you from a Ravens perspective in terms of money. I think we should sign him after this year. Extend him. I don't know what that means. Extend two years, extend three years, what? But lock him up. The talent is there. Incredible against the run. Improving and effective against the pass, I think. You can let me know what you think. He's got two and a half sacks already. Um, and, he and he's not playing every snap. So I think the skills are there. The improvement in technique is there. Never heard a word negative about him. To me, he seems like a nice guy except for after the ball snapped. And that's exactly the kind of guys you want on your team is people that are mean, you know, once the ball snapped and up to or just after the whistle.
Justin Matabike has it all. Uh, let me know if you guys agree, disagree. If you if you think there's some missing elements in my analysis of him, analysis of him, I didn't I didn't intend for the video to go 25 minutes, but it sure is fun. And hopefully the sound of my voice lets you know that we need some positivity. And Travis Jones and Dust, Justin Matabike, if you ask me, there's a lot of positivity there. Even though with Jones it's a little bit smaller sample size in terms of snaps because he missed some games, and Matabike really I think could be playing another six, eight snaps a game and giving us the same level of effectiveness. We're doing a D-line rotation, which I like, keeps guys fresh. I understand it. But selfishly, you know, Matabike is a dominant player against a lot of different concepts that give us trouble when he's not on the field. Appreciate you guys' time. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section.